Welcome back to another video guys. Today it's all about 4.2 and a new node grid and some tips and tricks I discovered since the release of 4.2 yesterday. Um, so this video is also nicely tagged so you can jump to the uh, specific time mark if you want to. So let's have some fun. So the newest addition is basically the node grid and you can call the node grid here in Bitwig Studio by uh, typing in node grid then it's here. And it's just a normal grid device. It's only special in that sense that it's dedicated to the controls or the container function to uh, the node functionality. So we don't have here, if you call here um, a poly grid, for instance, you don't have the out volume control here um, because it makes no sense. It's just outputs nodes. Um, you have prefix, postfix, and that's it. Um, but you can also just use what or what what you do inside here of the node grid. You can also do inside the pulley grid or the FX grid. Um, and the reason why we have special containers is basically because of these controls. So for FX audio FX, you have a mix knob because you want to mix in your audio effect. And for the pulley grid, you have an out volume knob because it's basically a synthesizer or a sampler or whatever you do inside here. It's an instrument and an instrument needs an out volume uh, knob, of course. And a mix knob wouldn't make sense here, right? So wh what do you want to mix into? There's nothing there on the track there. It's the first instrument. It's basically the device that creates the sound. And in the node grid here, um, you have no out or, or mix knob or anything because it just outputs the nodes. And as you can see in this order here, we have now all the device categories available as a grid device. So we have the node generation, we have the sound generation, and we have audio effects altering the sounds of the instrument. The second reason why we have different uh, device containers uh, for the grids is that Bitwig is with the browser um, context aware. So let's imagine you have an instrument here and an audio effect after the instrument and you want to insert here some note effects. And of course, when you hit the plus button here, the browser automatically shows you only the note FX devices instead of instruments or audio effects because we want to insert something in front of the instrument. So the browser now is aware that we want to insert probably um, some note effects or some note altering devices, right? So, and here is the note grid available. The same goes for the presets. When we switch here to presets, we only see here presets that are available for note FX devices. Um, that makes sense in front of an instrument. And also, of course, when we switch here to, let's see, um, node grid, you can see all the node grid presets in here. And it makes sense that you only see these presets because we want to insert something in front of the instrument. So this is also a reason why we have um, different instruments or different devices for the grid. So when we look here or when we create a new node X device um, or node grid device inside here, there's nothing different than in the poly grid or the FX grid. It's the same thing. Um, the only difference is that we have now in 4.2, these two devices here or modules, and you can also expand these here, um, which basically gets you the information of the gate signals when you press on your MIDI keyboard the key then you get the gate and the pitch and also the velocity and you also some channel informations if you use an MPE controller you get timbre and pressure and so on and you can just route them here from the input to the output and in between you can hook up some math or logic modules and can alter the pitch or the gate information and so on um, so these two modules are basically new in 4.2 and you can also use them inside your polygrid if you want to. 
um, so search for in. So we get the node in here and you can use them here and can also output after the polygrid some nodes um, with a node out here. So in here, right? And you can see we have here some we have here some settings which are basically the default settings. So when there's no signal going into this jack here, um, this one outputs this node and at this velocity setting on this channel. We can set some default settings when there's no signal available. So there's no, no really, not really um, a difference between these devices. Now, um, that's what I want to make clear because a lot of people thought, uh, oh, the node grid is something completely new. It's not, it's just a grid. So let's actually build something in this constellation. I have now here a pulley grid, which kind of imitates a synthesizer or an instrument, or it's a simple instrument here. We can play something on the keyboard. And we have an FX grid device here where there's a phaser plus in there. Um, to simulate some kind of audio effect, we have a mix knob. We can dial in here the audio effect slightly. And then we have in front here the mono, mono, uh, uh, note grid. And the note grid just takes the notes with the gate and the pitch and the velocity and the channel settings and outputs it straight here to the back of the note grid and delivers it to the instrument, right? So we get here from here, we come from the MIDI keyboard, MIDI keyboard goes into the node grid, node grid changes the notes, uh, outputs the notes into the bully grid, into the uh, synthesizer, the synthesizer outputs audio into the FX grid here, and the FX grid mixes it uh, together with a try and the bad signal. So we have a pretty standard um, instrument chain setup. So what we do now is we try and change and alter the pitch informations or maybe also the gate informations that we get from the MIDI keyboard. So at this point here, when you select the device itself, you can see the note grid can operate in polyphonic mode or in monophonic mode, which means it only accepts one note after the other. If you press multiple keys, it just takes the last note you pressed. Right? Um, so you have to be aware of that. If you use your polyphonic mode, then every time you press multiple keys on the keyboard, this patch gets duplicated virtually uh, to how many keys you press. If you press five keys, you duplicate this virtually five times. And on every voice, you do basically the same operation. So let's take here, for instance, a quantizer. We have this quantizer here. We get the MIDI or the pitch information from our keyboard and get into the quantizer to the output here. And when we press now keys, it doesn't matter which keys we are pressing on the keyboard. We only get these notes here that are highlighted out of the device itself. Okay. So it's basically a diatonic transposer or a transposition map or however you want to call it. It's a quantizer, a pitch quantizer. It quantizes the pitch information to a constrained, um, constrained range of notes or notes you select here. But you can also switch this here to a different mode with this button. And in this mode, it accepts the MIDI input. So when we press your multiple keys on the keyboard, uh, you can see we're pressing this note, this note, and this note. And now this pitch, pitch quantizer here only allows these notes that are highlighted to be passed through or where the signal is corrected to. Um, so we can deselect this here and maybe use, for instance, let's use a transpose here in front and use an LFO. Um, it's this one. And now we just modulate this here. Let's go for 12 semitones, maybe. Okay, like this. And just, you know, modulate up or down. So when we press now multiple keys, 
can hear something happens. Maybe too fast. The problem now is that um, we only get here some signals because we are triggering the MIDI keyboard and we get the gate information from the keyboard. What we need for every pitch or every voice, we need a separate trigger. So we can do this by using um, a triggers module here, which just outputs a static pulse. So let's do this. Maybe go to six. And then we press now multiple keys. We get kind of this sound. So I'm holding the keys on my keyboard here. And the LFO modulates the transpose, which alters all the pitches that are going into the transpose. And remember, it's for every single note you are pressing. It's for every voice separate. And then we go to the pitch quantizer here, which quantizes the pitches to the notes we are pressing on the keyboard. And the triggers fakes basically um, some notes, uh, some no gate information. So we're triggering each voice differently with this thing here, right? The problem now is that the LFO changes the pitch here from the transpose in between the triggers. So we need to sample and hold to get rid of this glitchy feel and do something like this. So every time a trigger happens, we sample the current pitch information and hold the pitch information until the trigger releases. So this should be sound cleaner. So now we have the problem that for every voice we are using five or four pulses here. And maybe we want to change this for every voice differently. And we can do this by um, maybe separating um, this here with the pitch. So get, we get to the pitch information, use a modulator, get the pitch. And of course, every note has a different value so, or a, a different um, signal strength. So for instance, if I press, press C3, it's zero. If I press C4, it's probably uh, 0.5 or something. Um, so we can modulate here this in this direction. So every node, the higher the, no the node is I'm inputting into the node grid, the more triggers I generate here. Right. So when I press now multiple keys, I should have different speeds or different pulses for each node. Okay. So because we don't know which pulse or how many pulses we play for each voice, we can kind of correct this um, by using a clock quantize here. So we go with the triggers into the clock quantize and we want to have a second trigger module here. And this trigger module kind of quantize everything to a 16th note grid. This should sound a bit better or maybe a bit more groovy. Let's try it. So I press multiple keys again. Okay, so you can create kind of interesting patterns or appreciators with this without using the appreciator. That's pretty nice. It's a reverb here, maybe a delay. 
I'm throwing this a bit down here. Um, yeah. So you can create with multiple keys on the keyboard, you can create a pretty strange appreciator that sounds a bit different than your usual appreciator, right? Another interesting concept is to use the pitch quantize um, to create some kind of chord tracks. So imagine you have one track or one instrument track. Um, let's use a multi note here. Um, and you call this chord track. Um, inside this chord track, you generate multiple notes. Um, for instance, here, just some minor chords. And you use a diatronic transposer, um, D sharp minor, and you create some chords. You can also just paint in here some chords. It doesn't matter really. Um, Do something like this here. Or you can put it also here on the clip launcher. Um, and just loop this over and over. And when you put in here a polysynth, you get the notes. Of course. You can also use Scalar 2 if you want to, or any chords progression generator, um, it doesn't matter. Um, the only thing you need to know is if it outputs MIDI notes, you can use it. Inside here, we can now use the quantizer, the pitch quantize. Go in here, go out, switch this to this mode. And then on the left side, you can use a different track here. For instance, the chord track, and we want to get the notes after the key filter. So now this pitch quantizer basically gets notes from this track or from this chord track here and quantizes everything to the current state of this chord progression. So what we can do now is we can hit here arm and play on the keyboard and everything gets corrected to these three notes. Maybe add here maybe the sound from this. Let me add to the police and so you can hear it. So what this means is you basically can create a chord track and with the note grid device here and this method you can kind of, yeah, harmonize with your keyboard to the current chord position. So you can create very, very weird chord progressions and then use it as a guide for the pitch quantizer. And if you don't like that the pitch changes for some of the, uh, some of the transitions, because when you hold the pitch, um, can I do this here? Maybe use an ADSR. You can hear, I just hold basically the note and when the, uh, when the chord progression changes, it also changes here, this one. If you don't want to have this, then you need also a sample and hold here. So you need the current, you need to hold the current note without changing the value. So the moment you press basically a note that's in here doesn't get changed when the chord progression changes to a different chord. Okay. So this is something you need to be aware of. So this is an easy trick to change pitch quantize on the fly with the chord track. Super handy.
So let's take a note clip here. Inside this note clip, we paint only two notes. For instance, we choose here the D. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the fifth of D. So two notes. And we go straight into the note grid here. Inside the note grid, we use the new poly to mono module. Looks like this. And we get some pitch informations in here and a pull down. Here you can choose what you want to output. So you can say, um, so remember the nodes that are going into the node grid or in the grid in general are converted to signals. And signals mean it's just a value. So C3 is basically the value of zero. You can see this all the time when you use an oscilloscope here. And the middle line of the oscilloscope is zero. And when you input C3, then you get the line of zero or a signal of zero. If you go to here, this is, I think, uh, C4 or C5, you know, the value gets higher. Uh, you can also use a readout for that, which gives you just the number, more or less. You can see it raises, basically. And the highest note is, I think, C7, which is basically 1. So C3 is 0, C7 is 1, and C-2, I think, is minus 1. Okay, so all the notes get converted to just signals that have a value, a number. So that's important to know because when we now input multiple notes, we can say, uh, I want to s want to have the sum of of these notes here, which are D4, A4, and each of these notes has a value. And you can add these values together, right? You can say, give me the sum of that. And the interesting part now is we can play a third note, which is the sum of these two notes, right? So we add the number, the value of this to the value of this to get a third result or a, a third note, which is the sum of these two notes. I hope this is clear what I wanted to say. Um, so we can do this by just outputting regular here, the notes that are going in, which are, which are our two notes. And then we are using a second, uh, a second output here. And this one, takes the pitch of the sum. So now we have three notes playing. So you can hear it, right? And the more these notes are apart or yeah, basically away from C3, which is zero, um, the higher the third note becomes. Uh, maybe I use here the um, this MIDI chord analyzer. You can you can see it then on the keyboard. You can see we have now three notes here. can see it it's, it jumps way up here it's basically a combination or the sum of these two notes to create a third note it can be interesting um, to use this for chord progressions or yeah, in general, just an interesting fact. You also can switch it to average, which can lead to interesting results, maybe. Let's say you want to target multiple or individual notes. And we have still here two notes playing. And when we use your note grid, completely empty, close this here. We want to 
let's say we want to change the upper note and we also want to change the lower note but differently so we can use here the poly to mono thing module again you can say max which is the highest signal which is the upper note or minimum which is the lowest signal which is of course the lowest note so let's say we go here for the upper note and use or oh, let's say we use it just to transpose we want to transpose the upper note up by seven semitones you can also use a quantizer of course or whatever you want and then we duplicate this and say we want to target here the minimal the lowest note and we want to pitch it down by five semitones we just do that the problem now is when you input just one note um this one note goes into this chain and also into this chain which produces again two notes because we just duplicate the note here or multiply the note and then we add just some alterations to each of these notes so this is a problem but what we can do is we can multiply this here again remove this and now we have to disable basically this, these two patches here when we just press one key. And we can do this by using the keys held thing here. It shows us how many keys we are pressing. So when I press one key, it shows one. When I press uh, three keys or two, it shows two or three. So it gives us the information of how many keys are being pressed. And we can use a constant here and say two and we make a logical comparison here by using here the comparator this equals this so when we have two here this sends a logic signal out so one is nothing two keys gives us a yes or a gate or a high signal and then we need maybe a select here which yeah he selects everything when we press or only switches on when we have multiple keys let's do this go in here of course so every time i press one key it goes through that line and we need to of course also a select in here and maybe not i'm gonna press two keys only this is active when i press one key only this is active okay so every time i input two nodes uh, these two chains are active and altering the upper node and the lower node when i only input one node only this becomes active and just outputs the node so we can distinct or the difference differentiate between multiple node inputs right we can create interesting devices just with this let's say you have three nodes right d e3 g3 c4 and you want to target this node so how do we get this because we know the lowest value of the of the d3 we know the max value which is c4 and we also know the sum of all these nodes together can just calculate um, the middle node so you can do this by using mono poly and we get the sum of all three nodes together and we subtract the highest node max highest node so all three nodes together subtracted by the highest node and then um, subtract again here yeah, by the lowest note okay 
and then we get yeah, get the readout here. Um, we get G3 when I hit play. And we have here G3. So when I switch this to A3, let's see, we have A3, right? So this is how we get to the middle node. And you can target then this node, or you get the pitch more or less of the, of the middle node, and you can alter this and can output the node separately. And yeah, have some fun with it. Another interesting way of using the node grid is by making it basically a drum machine. Um, so using um, XO here as a VST, so you can see it's it also works with uh, VST plugins, of course, because node grid just outputs random random nodes. Let's go here with some preset. I have no idea how this sounds. That's fine. Um, I think this one is C1. So create a node grid. Um, and then we can utilize basically here yeah, the default settings. We can say, I want to trigger the kick drum here with C1. Um, disable this and choose trigger. this one and switch it to monophonic mode so it plays for itself we don't need the inputs here we duplicate this and say this is a snare well, we can use here the Gates module. Right, so we can basically create some kind of step sequencers with this. Also use here yeah, maybe steps mod. Change the velocity. Okay. You can also turn on here, of course, the global shuffle for the grid, and add here some groove. And bring in some probabilities. The clap here. So you can use everything you have in the grid. Just to play around with some beats. You can also, of course, use maybe the clock quantizer, some triggers, 16th grid, and some. You know, make some more groovy things. So just by using here the, the grid as a mono grid, monophonic grid, and the outputs here with some triggers and some gate uh, things, or maybe also your pitches module. So uh, yeah, you can create basically nice step sequences for your drum machines just for fun here i used basically my uh, pitch quantize trick from earlier 
with the sample on hold, the grid is on mono. And I also use the new quantized device here to make all my inputs quantized to the grid. So on this track here, I'm having a EDM chord progression, some random thing. And also the pitch quantize is here basically connected to the chord track here above. And what I can do now is I can play here a melody that only uses notes from this chord progression. So it plays very well along without me actually, um, so I'm not able to play the piano, but with this I can. Sometimes this is great when you use some complicated jazz chords and you want to find the melody that also is, you know, harmonizing with the chord progression, then this is a neat trick. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have some additional tricks and tips, maybe, uh, for the note grid, then please let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you like the video and I see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye.